Merry Christmas! Welcome to our eight nights of street fights. Each day leading to Christmas, Brad and I will revisit every WWE miracle on 34th Street fight. Brad, my man, we've made it to 2018. This is very recent. We probably maybe even remember this match. I know we're going to get into our thoughts here. We saw Elias versus Bobby Lashley with Leo Rush by his side. What did you think of this match? Uh, I'm going to read you the first line I wrote down in my notes. This is fine, I guess. <laughs> that, that was, that was okay. Good. Well, thank you all for tuning in. This was a, <laughs> a great addition. We will see you for our... It got better. So uh, this this is... You got to remember, I wasn't watching in 2018. I wasn't watching in 2019. Sure. So uh, this is recent. I don't remember it. What I know is Bobby Lashley now. What I was introduced to reintroduced because i knew bobby lashley when he debuted was bobby lashley with the headband dating lana getting married to lana until that thing just blew up and stopped and then we got hurt business bobby which was amazing this was not that this was bobby with leo and elias who i had no context for when when i was introduced to elias he was a heel so i've only ever known him as a heel he uh, apparently is a, is a baby face in 2018 fighting a heel Bobby Lashley, but I don't really know why he's a heel. He just has a headband uh, and they refer to him as the almighty, but he's not the almighty. He's like the all righty, I guess. Uh, but this gave us some firsts in these holiday street fights. The first with Lego being involved we had a box with actual toys in it a bunch of assorted legos came out on to the the mat and i grimaced when i looked at it um eventually we know that bobby's ass is going to take the brunt of the blow onto the pile of legos yeah, what, what what did cole right say away. i wonder if i put this in my notes he said a perforated glute or something thank you thank yeah. you it's exactly Punch, right punctured a glute it's something yeah, like that, that. i remember saying, yeah I was right, but he absolutely went ass first onto that pile. Uh, I thought he was going to take it on the back. He did not no, <laughs> take no. it on the back. And we, and we had Renee Young on commentary. Yes. Which I know I know there were some, I don't know if detractors are the right word. I mean, she even admits now on her podcast and in interviews that, you know, that was a first for her and she was learning and, you yeah. know, she wasn't perfect. No, no one is. Uh, but it was nice to hear a woman's voice on commentary. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, that was the era where... They, they put Renee Young, or not they put, but, you know, she sort of earned her stripes and, and right. had that spot. That was that was different. And uh, immediately got shut down for her comment, which was really funny. You caught it, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Renee saying, that should be illegal for the Lego. It's like, it's, nothing's illegal in a street fight. It's a street fight. It's a street fight. Yeah. She's yeah, like, oh, good. well, you got a good point. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, I guess. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah, it was, I enjoy her. I, uh, I thought it was great because she recovered really well in it, being that fresh into it. Uh, I, I laughed pretty hard. I thought it was great. Um, we got more extinguisher, though. The extinguisher is just a constant in these things. Uh, I, I don't I don't hate it. It it hasn't been used as well since the Mark Henry thing where, where Sando, I think that was the match, where Sando couldn't figure out how to do it. So, Henry, right. I don't know if that was an audible or not. It, it felt kind of like yeah. Sandow was supposed to spray him and just it didn't work out. That was very noticeable, right? And yeah. then Henry took it over. Henry and just kind of carefully yeah. took it, pulled the pin out, and just hit him Showed in the, the leg and sprayed and... it in the fist. Yeah. Yeah. Just... I, great call. I, I observed that too. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, but this one obviously that didn't happen. I have a feeling that was a that was a conversation that was had at, for every match after that. Um, Leo went through a table. The the wrestlers in the match didn't. Elias was in control for a lot. There was another bowling ball dick shot. Uh, and then there was a cello shot, which I thought was a fun play on words. I don't know if that was intentional. Uh, took Taking a cello shot. And that was the finish. Kind of, Tyler. It was kind of the finish. It was the finish, but it wasn't finished. If that makes sense. Because there were still cookies at that table for Leo to have stuffed into his mouth before having eggnog poured on him, which I thought was 
by far the worst part of the match. That was disgusting. I can't imagine eggnog being poured intentionally all over my face. Yeah, I didn't love that. This also, in particular, that was a moment where I thought, okay, maybe this is appealing to the kids because we know Leo is is very brash and and uh, you know was clearly a heel manager back then. But um, yeah, good point about the bowling ball. That was a, a pretty good good shot uh, to the to the family jewels. The cello. Yeah, that came in snug. <laughs> that yeah, that in, really did. I was like, how did they work that? Yeah, he, Bobby he, Lashley was wearing you know some sort of. I don't know. Or... I'm sure you've been it hitting came the in cup with some before. Speed, with some velocity. If you've been hitting the cup before, you know damn well it doesn't do that much. Yeah. Like it keeps yeah. you going to the hospital, but it's not going to make you have a good day. Like, was the bowling ball rigged in some way? I've... It had to have been like a six pounder, right? Like yeah. there's no way that was a 20 pounder. No, yeah. no. Uh, but yeah, I definitely took note of the ball and the and the cello that was used. And I think that's been a staple for a lot of Elias's uh, matches. Yeah. That I've I'm pretty sure we've seen him with that before. Yeah. This was also interesting because, uh, well, I have two notes here. You mentioned Bobby Lashley's headband earlier. I'm so grateful you did because I noted that after he gave Elias a German suplex, his Bobby Lashley's headband fell off. And then what do you know? He took the headband off the mat and put it back on himself and then continued the match, continued beating up Elias. So Lashley's commitment to the headband back in 2018 was was so real. Post match, Brad, even post eggnog to Leo, I found it interesting running this back on Peacock that um, this match, this edition of Raw, was one week, if I wrote this down correctly, it was one week before Stephanie McMahon, Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, and Triple H gave the infamous in ring promo We are taking back Monday Night Raw. We are taking back SmackDown Live. We are going to make this about you all, the fans, and, you know, what we've done before. It was basically kind of blaming it on on Baron Corbin in in storyline and saying, we are going to be here for you fans. We are turning this back. This is us. Of course, they're cheered. They're massive baby faces, even though they've been heavily scrutinized for how the product was. I I found it interesting that this was right in that time frame of, oh, yeah, this is when they gave that really – that really memorable promo and a lot of the fan base in my opinion thought those words ended up being pretty hollow because not too long after that we had triple h in the main event of wrestlemania against roman reigns and just sort of the the classic tropes that i think were really plaguing the, the company because this this was not an, an awesome time i would argue in the company's uh, creative history so the the timing of this match and of wwe in 2018 2019 also just really fascinates me because i think their product was pretty hit or miss and and largely miss misses uh, this is kind of what spurred AEW and the hunger for for an alternative yeah and and i will say this i thought the match itself was pretty good i thought the the wrestling was really good yeah it was just you know it was it was gross at the end yeah, uh, I, I didn't like at all the commentary kept referring to making making young boy not a man jokes about Leo Rush. It really bothered me for some reason. It's so stupid. Just because he's small, smaller. Yeah, I, I don't get it, man. Like it, yeah. it really bothers me uh, looking at it, knowing knowing what he became and what he can do and what he's capable yes. of. Having him be a manager for Bobby Lashley to have cookies shoved in his mouth and then eggnog poured on him. And treated like this blow off little boy, like that really bothered me. Yeah, yeah, he's an amazing in ring worker, yeah. and there was, like you said, he was definitely pigeonholed. I mean, I think what what probably hurt him is that he is such a talented speaker. He is so charismatic on the mic that once you get that picture in your mind of okay, he's a smaller guy, but he's charismatic and can talk. We need him to be a manager. Period. It. He definitely got boxed into a position that i don't think was fully befitting of his talents no and it and and this was still that era too where they didn't really know what to do with bobby and i don't know that bobby knew what to do with bobby Uh, i still i still see him fitting best as the uh kind of the leader of the hurt business i would like that to be run back again and just please they could they could retcon that so easily i know they've tried to do it a couple of times now Shelton Benjamin can still go, right? There's some momentum about getting him in a prominent spot. Please, we need it. But but even if he decides to retire because he's been wrestling forever, he's yeah. he'd be fine in there as just 
muscle, right? Like absolutely, it's absolutely there's there's plenty of talent on the roster that right right now doesn't have maybe a a role or could use that push if you need them to turn turn heel or turn face depends on how that that roster is. Uh, maybe you put Omas in there, maybe MVP Omas, and then everybody else gets back. To, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I just know that Bobby Lashley, her business Bobby, was the best version of Bobby coming out in the suit. Just all of it was so good. 100%. And final note for me, I am very, very intrigued with where Elias's character goes. Uh, th this was four years ago as we're recording, right? 2018. I'm curious to see what the next four years look like, not only for Bobby Lashley. The man is ageless, though. He looks just yes. as amazing as he did Crazy. in 2018, 2008. Yeah. I mean, he just, he's yeah. a specimen. But for Elias, he was so over, uh, especially as a baby face. The whole gimmick, the walk with Elias. We saw that before the match. The crowd is playing along with him. I'm really interested to see if he can gain that level of popularity back at some point or if we've sort of seen him reach his zenith in the company. I hope that's not the case, but man, this, this dude was so over. I even have a Funko Pop figure of the guy i was walking with elias just like everyone in the audience was it was it was great stuff i i, I hope good things for him i i wish i wish he can reach that those heights again at some point in the future it seems like he's on his way there it seems like he's pretty popular right now with his his resurgence since his the the injury or the near death of his brother uh ezekiel it's sure. it's good to have him back and and i wish the best for for ezekiel on his his road to recovery so that brings us to a close for night six of our eight nights of street fights for our miracle on 34th street night street fight breakdown. Tyler, this has been a struggle uh, <laughs> for me through all of these embrace the mess. Uh, we are uh, absolutely going to ask you to embrace a charity though. Tonight, we're asking you to embrace the Southern Arizona AIDS Foundation. You can go to saaf.org, check them out, see what they stand for, see what they do to help the community. Donate there. If you don't want to donate there, but you have another charity in mind, please donate there. We're asking you to give your time, your money, your resources. We're just asking you to give during this holiday season. Uh, you can find us in the usual places if you'd like, but we'd rather find you there donating and giving thank you for listening thank you for tuning in thank you for checking us out on youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts merry christmas and we'll see you for night seven <laughs>